Hello. Well, today I uh, want to talk about a movie that, uh, well, is, uh, well, this year it's 40 years old. Um, it's a film that uh, I thought about talking about for a while, it, but I thought, you know, uh, I thought about talking about it last year, but considering how it be an anniversary uh, for this, uh, this year of the film, I thought it'd be a good time to hold off and get to it and um, that film is of course Blade Runner um, now this version actually has five cuts of the movie um, the 30th anniversary um, the final cut took that off because uh, it was sort of these are usually always just stuck on with some cheap stuff and I just sort of take them off and then just put them in here with the when they have these little books uh, digi book as they're called um, yeah um, has the final cut on the first disc. Uh, this is three discs. Second disc has the original theatrical cut, the international theatrical cut, and the director's cut. Um, and then the third disc um, has the rare work print version, um, which I actually just I, I rewatched after all this time. Um, it's been a while since I had uh, seen it. Uh, I mean, I I, I watched. Uh, the various versions, you know, the theatrical and the international theatrical cut, the director's cut, and the final cut, and so on. But not too long ago, I watched the work print, and it's very interesting, you know, especially how, as the end of the film goes, there's, you know, tip music. You know, they, you know, they, you know, either they hadn't uh, completely figured out how the into the film, like the score will go, or maybe they did, they just yet had yet to apply it to the work print version. Um, and there's an introduction to that, um, where Ridley Scott basically said that this film, you know, that film was sort of shown to audiences for like test screenings, and so it's pretty cool to be able to see something like that, you know. You don't typically see uh, work print versions uh, very often, um, but you know it's cool that this version has this. Um, the uh, you know of course the old plot about you know you know Rick Deckard uh, is a Blade Runner has to go and um, uh, retire replicants. You know androids uh, that look and talk like humans and basically are used to, for certain very specific uh, things like you're, they're, you know, programmed um, to do certain essential things and um, you know four of these replicants are you know out on earth uh, from Nexus 6 and you know they're trying to find a way to Live long, you know, because they have a four-year lifespan. They don't want to die. Um, and it's interesting, you know, replicants seem to have, um, be able to, these pro are programmed to have, like, emotions, and yet they don't completely, like, understand them, because, you know, they're not human. Um, you know, and so, they, they can feel fear, you know, that's which is sort of a recurring thing, like, it's, funny thing to live in fear and um it's that's seems to be a, a very a fairly recurring theme throughout the film regarding the replicants that Deckard is after and um you know the designer uh, Tyrell you know you know uh Roy Batty who is basically like the leader you know of, of these four uh 
replicants. You know, they uh, uh, Rick Deckard is played by, of course, uh, Harrison Ford and uh, Roy Batty. Batty, Batty, Batty is a uh, played by uh, Rutger Hauer. Um, and uh, you know, he he wants to live. He wants to learn and know how to live longer than his uh, ex uh, expiration. Uh, date, you know, four years, and um, Tyrell, with his desire, isn't going to, you know, do anything, and it's like, you know, he's like, there's really no way to do so, and basically, you know, it doesn't seem like it, if, if he could, it doesn't seem like he wanted to, because, you know, they're all supposed to have a certain period, they, uh, they live, they have a purpose, they, once that piss is filled, and then they, they die, you know, or they're, you know, retired, essentially. Um, but, uh, a lot's been said about, uh, Deckard, you know, regarding being a replicant. Um, that's a discussion that's been, you know, going on for a long time. Riley Scott says, it, uh, spoiler alert, Deckard is a replicant. Harrison Ford says no. And it's interesting how, you know, the writers, because this is based on the book, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And uh, Hampton uh, Fancher and David Peoples had interesting stuff to say. Um, Hampton said that he uh one version that he wrote you know sort of the ending was sort of like some sort of philosophical thing like uh, is there like is, like for humans or replicants like you know is there something uh similar to them like how you know throughout the film when we see roy he's sort of doing like this and then you know at the end Harrison Ford, you know, Deckard was supposed to do something similar. You know, not to say necessarily, like, he's a replicant or anything, but sort of like, you know, maybe they're not too different, you know. Uh, you know replicants, you know, and, and, and like, newer uh, models, they are, you know, they're basically, you know, designed, uh, you know, to obviously, you know, look like and feel like people you know even have some emotions but again not complete understanding uh you know beyond what they are designed to understand you know that's a thing like you know there's a difference between a machine and a, a human you know a human knows humanity um like a machine might be able to under have a certain understanding of it but they won't completely know and understand since they're a machine and they're not human. Um, and there was some sort of philosophical thing with that at the end of Hampton's script. And then the, with Peoples, you know, his uh, ending, you know, there's stuff, you know, that uh, narration throughout the film and how he wrote a, a line of Deckard that says, like, you know, um, You know, whoever designed me, you know, like how we're like, he's talking about designs and now, you know, uh, uh, whoever designed me didn't do that great of a job. You know, Tyrell didn't design me, but whoever did, you know, it's like, you know, it was, basically there's some sort of like, you know, it was supposed to be like a spiritual thing. You know, you know, when he says designer, it's like God it doesn't mean Tyrell or anybody like Tyrell. You know, you know, but uh, Ridley Scott read that, and yet he interprets that as he's a replicant um, when that wasn't the case. And I guess the writer wasn't able to uh, discuss that with him. He just read that and then just took off with that. But it's interesting how you know the writer thinks of it one way, and yet when the director sees it and reads it and 
he interprets it a different way. And then, um, um, and, um, how I know this was, you know, I saw a video about, you know, somebody saying he's, you know, Deckard's not a replicant. And, you know, of course it was always subjective, but I always thought the notion was interesting because, you know, of that, you know, because really the film is about, you know, Deckard, you know, sort of finding his humanity again. And by the end of it, he basically, he essentially does, you know, um, after everything, you know, you know, maybe he, you know, humans and replicants may not be com totally, uh, you know, dissimilar, you know, of course there are differences and, you know, he, um, <clears throat> Uh, Rachel, uh, the replicant who, but, you know, has memories in, like, when she was a girl, but they're not uh, hers or Tyrell's niece's memories. Um, but uh, it's interesting how, you know, people have different interpretations. And, of course, you know, there's the famous, you know, with the eyes glowing, you know, and uh, there's a certain trick to do that and how, uh, um, Sean Young has the, there's the light and there's like glass and then she's looking off here and the, from that the light has a reflective in her eyes and then Harrison Ford, you know, he goes to, walks from in front of her to then behind her and then he says something and he looks at her, but when he looks at her, you know, he's in the eye line with the, uh, of the light too, so. You know, even though he's looking at her, you know, enough of his eyes are uh, getting the light, so it's sort of bouncing off him. And so, you know, you know I, in a way, I guess it was always like a mistake. Uh, and, and, you know, as technology has gotten better, that mistake has never been rectified because, you know, really Scott sees Deckard as a replicant. Um, but, of course... Um, there was the sequel, Blade Runner, 2049, 2049, however you want to say that year. Um, he's alive, so, you know, if he is a replicant, he clearly didn't have that four-year uh, lifespan. Or, you know, perhaps because he was a bright, bright, bad Blade Runner, they didn't bother to give him one, like they designed him to make one. Or he was not a replicant at all, and he was always a human, and he's just, you know, aged as such. Um, I do tend to think of Deckard as a human, as again, you know, sort of the core of the film is, you know, throughout the film, you know, hear the narration, and it seems like, you know, like how it even says how, you know, Blade Runners are not supposed to feel any emotion. You know, sort of supposed to be sort of like, you know, um, Replicants, you know, they don't really have emotion. I mean, they might be programmed to have emotion, but they don't totally comprehend it because they're not human. They don't know how to properly, uh, you know, express emotion. You know, in a way, I guess, one way it is like, you know, they don't really have emotion. I mean, you know, they do, but it's programmed, you know, it's sort of artificial. You know, it's not completely truly authentic because it's not uh you know human emotion even though they look and sound like people it's not completely authentic compared to you know uh, a, a human and so from that you know Deckard's supposed to be you know you know the whole morality thing and uh human uh, entity and stuff and uh of it that's sort of a moral thing for him and how trying to get that his humanity and yet he sort of feels conflicted like you know kill Zora and you know and he's a you know he's a replicant but that doesn't necessarily make me feel any better about it. I'm shooting a woman in the back um and of course you know uh, later you know he's supposed to you know kill Rachel because she's a replicant of course you know so he's supposed to kill four well now there's five and, um, yeah, he, you know, uh, we see what happens uh, to, you know, 
Leon and Pris and Roy. Um, but, you know, in the end, he doesn't seem to want to, you know, kill Rachel. You know, like, he loves her. And um, I think, in a way, that's sort of, why that's fairly important. Um, you know, uh, but it seems as if he was genuine, you know, and, you know, he's not supposed to feel emotion, and yet he... Throughout the film, we sort of see little glimpses of him being a bit emotional. Like, and in a way, he's sort of like drinking quite a bit um, at times. You know, perhaps because you know, you know, for what he's doing, he's like not doesn't necessarily want to be doing this, but he has to. So to get through it, he's sort of like drinking and stuff. It's it's a very interesting film. It's very. It's one that, um, you know, this is a cult film. Um, of course, you know, it, it's a, a film that, you know, it, at the time of its release, you know, E.T. came out. And so people went to see that film. Not too many saw this, so it didn't do the best numbers it probably could have at the box office. Um... And also, perhaps, maybe uh, because of the ways people could interpret it, that might, uh, you know, maybe that might have turned off some people from perhaps seeing it again or really talking about it to sort of uh, get any word of mouth in. Um, so, from that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, back in 1982 when the film came out, I could definitely see how perhaps this just wouldn't necessarily be the biggest hit uh, at the time but of course as time has gone on you know we've seen this film's popularity grow and grow and grow especially when you know you've got Ridley Scott who prior to this you know he made Alien and uh, over the years he's made so many other excellent films you know he made Thelma and Louise, Gladiator, uh, Black Hawk Down, The Martian um, and so many others I actually like Prometheus. I think that's a fine film. <clears throat> I haven't seen Alien Covenant, though, so... I don't know how uh, good that is. Uh, or how bad. I've heard stuff about it, but... I haven't seen it myself. But, you know, this... Uh, this film, you know, with how... Uh, just sort of like in the presentation and the story and how the, everything ends at the end... It might not this it might not have necessarily resonated with people too well, perhaps, but you know uh, regardless, it's one that is in conversation quite a bit. It's a very good film. Um, Harrison Ford's great, Sean Young, Rucker Hauer, um, Edward James Olmos. Uh, yeah, there's Daryl Hannah good in the film. Um, yeah, very good film. Um, not really much else to say, really. Um, it's one I enjoy. I like re-watching. Um, and especially with this set, it's really cool to have the different... Uh, versions you can watch the final cut uh, the theatrical cut um, either the US or the international theatrical cuts um, or a director's cut or with this you know you get the uh, rare work print I saw for the 4k version they don't really offer the they don't seem to offer the work print um, which I thought was a bit disappointing um, it, I don't know it's it that's that's very interesting to watch it's always you know, I don't watch that version a whole lot with, when I watch Blade Runner. Usually it's, you know, either the theatrical cuts or the, you know, final cut. You know, occasionally I'll watch the director's cut, but I don't know. It's just, I, it's just, you know, just others are, other cuts are, I find more interesting and fascinating. Um, <clears throat> um, but, you know... This is a film that 
has been talked about over the years and will continue to be talked about as years go on. Um, yeah, and that's really all uh, I have to say right now. Um, it's its 40th anniversary. Um, uh, excellent film, excellent performances. Story is very uh, well done. It's one that I like to rewatch every so often. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think about this film? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Um, why or why not? Um, and yeah, uh, give me your thoughts if you would like. Um, anyway, um, I hope all of you are having a great day, having a great week, and I hope you all have a great week. And I'll see you all next time.